So here's the side driver side panel of the 07 up sprinter van looking all plain and lonely just waiting for a big old window to be get, get put in it's raining today but we're gonna get this done real quickly it's gonna look real nice so wait for it all right this is Jonathan from van windows direct we're working on a 2007 and up sprinter van we're gonna put in a driver side forward window window from CR Lawrence today the part number FW621L. First thing we're going to start off with is we're going to tape off the inside of the metal. And the reason for that is we're going to use a one-handed reciprocating saw. And we want to just ensure that we're not going to scratch up the uh, interior paint of the van. Granted, the window will have a trim ring and will cover up most of uh, any scratches that might be put in there. But we want to go with the extra precautions and make sure that we don't put any scratches in our customer's vehicle that uh, weren't already there. So here we are taping off the uh, interior. So here we are, we're going to finish off the tape on the interior. As you see we went all the way around. And there we go, one last strip on the top just to make certain and now we will be ready to start cutting so, there you go okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and marker uh, with using a black marker all the way around the edge now this step is not necessary because you could just simply follow the oem stamping all the way around but we do like to have that black line to be able to follow. When you're using a reciprocating saw or different uh, cutting tools, sometimes there can be some vibration involved and uh, the whites just start blending together. And it's nice to have the black marker to kind of guide you along. So you make sure you make a nice clean cut the first time. Uh, limit the amount of work that you have to do to get this thing installed. As you can see, when we get to these uh, small structural pieces, we just kind of go straight across. The, if you line up your tape uh, in the beginning, it'll also make it a little bit easier. You can follow right along the tape when you mark it out. So uh, now that we're marked, we're taped, time to uh, get the saw and let's cut a giant hole. So we're going to drill in a couple holes. Get ready to uh, have some openings for our blade to get into. So we're going to use a one-handed reciprocating saw that we got over at the Home Depot from uh, Rigid. Works great for these uh, types of installs. Uh, you can get one, I think, for around $60. All right, here we are. We're going to start the cutting. We like to use a nice fine tooth blade. So as I mentioned before, we use a nice fine tooth blade. The reason for that is, as you can see, 
we already have a really clean cut going on. So it's going to minimize the amount of uh, filing we're going to have to do afterwards. So it's a 32 TPI. So we're going to continue on our cutting. straight through those inner structures just straight on through uh, no need to cut them separately if you wanted to cut them with the disc separate from going through with a uh, reciprocating saw that's fine but the like I said we're using a fine 32 uh, tooth blade and it cut right through both layers no problem so we're gonna go back to the top corner here and cut on down We want to leave the top intact that way uh, it's easier to deal with on the uh, end of the cutting and we'll show you that in just a moment. To the outside of the van and we're going to show you why we left the top uncut and cut the sides and bottom all right so here we are in the outside of the van as you can see we left the top that way we can hold it at the bottom we put some cardboard down just in case anything slips we don't want to scratch the side of the van and we're going to go ahead and uh, finish off our cutting now
as you notice, I just pulled that little spiral off of there. Uh, if you get any long spirals, you want to make sure you pull them. That way it doesn't scratch up the paint. Uh, the paint on these vans scratches so easily, unfortunately. See, there goes that panel. And we got a big hole there. Like I said, when we use the fine tooth blade, as you can see, it's pretty darn clean and smooth already. But we're going to go ahead and grab a file just to make sure that uh, it's really nice before we go ahead and install a window. All right, so here we are. We're going to go ahead and just file all around just to make sure there's no uh, high points or burrs or anything else that would inhibit our install. Won't have to do too much, as I said, with that fine tooth blade. It, uh, it limits the amount of filing you're going to have to do. So right now we're going to go through and put a little pilot hole all the way around the trim ring. The reason for this is the small black screws that they give you with the window. Uh, you can torque them in and they'll tap in on their own, but uh, you have a good chance of rounding out the heads and then it looks awful and may not tighten all the way. So if you put a little pilot hole real quick, it makes the job easier and less likely to round out the heads of the screws. As you can see, we already did the first two at the split. And what you want to do is you want to do those two first. That way you have the split uh, even. And then uh, put those in place so it keeps the, ring, uh, keeps the ring from moving around as you're going through and drilling out the other holes. Alright, so now that we have all those screws, all the holes already pre-drilled, we're going to take out these two screws, clean out any of the little metal shards that are in the channel, and then the way you'll be uh, prepped and ready for install. Trigger ramp, 
trim ring is off. And as you can see in that channel, there's a little bit of metal dust and everything. So we want to clean that out before we put it onto the van. As you can see, we just used a leaf blower. You can use a uh, compressor with the air nozzle. Uh, we just figured a blower, everyone has those at home usually, so that might be a easier tool for people All to right, use. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and dry fit the window right now because before we paint any edges, we wanna make sure that uh, we don't have to do any additional cutting. So they're gonna set the window in place. It appears that we're all good. Looks like the gap on the front and bottom is all straight. So it doesn't appear that we're gonna have to do any additional cutting on this to, uh, to get it to fly. So we're gonna go ahead and take it back down. Now we're gonna go ahead and prime those edges. Uh, not that it's totally necessary since you do have the rubber seal on the window already. Uh, so water shouldn't be getting to the edges anyway, but we wanna make certain that way, long term, you don't have to worry about any uh, rust or, or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and prime them right, now. So here we are. We're going to get some white primer and put it on a dauber. This is what we're going to use to just go around the edges. Some people might tape it off and spray it. That's one way to do it. Uh, at the end of the day, you just need to coat that rough edge. So we like to do it with daubers. It's just quick and clean, gets the job done. Not too much effort. As you can see, we are doing this in rain, so uh, we got the cardboard up acting like a little awning here. Not ideal conditions, but we'll get the job done. As you can see, the little bit difficult, it gets kind of fuzzy, but you got the white right there on the edge. That's all you need. We capped off the edge. Give it a couple minutes here to let it dry. And then, uh, and then we're ready to set the window in place. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove that tape that we used earlier from when we cut the hole. No need to have it anymore. We've already cut, we've primed, so there's not uh, paint coming into the inside. We're gonna go ahead and peel that off. As you can see, as he peels that off, that the paint is in uh, nice clean order no scratches or anything that was the whole purpose again this is all going to be hidden by the trim ring but at the end of the day we still we don't want to uh, scratch anything up we want a nice clean professional installation here all right so the next step is going to be uh, putting the window in place and attaching the trim ring and finishing off this uh, job. So I'm going to go ahead and cut here and we'll go. We'll get All right, grab so the now window. we're going to go ahead and put this window in the hole for the last time. All right, so here we go. Right, so again, we're in place. Everything looks good. Gap in the front here looks right. You can see that gap in the bottom looks even all the way across. It's nice to have two people. One's going to hold the window on the outside. You don't have to put a ton of force, but you want to make sure that that window doesn't come flying out. We're going to switch to the inside here in just a moment, but. Uh, Got one guy on the outside, 
one on the inside to put the right, trim so ring. Here we are. We're going to start uh, mounting in our trim ring. We're using a cordless gun, and the cordless gun we're going to have set to uh, to four. We don't need anything too strong. We just want to get these screws kind of started in place here. As you see, we're just going a little bit at a time. Trim. See that split nice and even. And again, we're just going through getting the a few threads into place. Some people tell you to do it by hand. Uh, that's an option. It's just sometimes the ring is very far from the frame and trying to do it by hand is very difficult. So uh, if you use a cordless power gun, it's no big deal. Just put it on a low setting. That, that way uh, you're not sitting there torquing down and bending your aluminum frame. The aluminum trim ring here is pretty thin metal. I mean, it's strong enough to hold everything in place for years to come. But uh, if you torque down right away, you are gonna bend that frame inwards and uh, it just looks sloppy. As you see, skipped a few, and the reason for that, we want to get the uh, window mounted so it takes some of the pressure off the guy outside holding it in place. Uh, that way uh, everything is, is held in, and also uh, you want everything to be even, kind of uh, as you're tightening up, you don't, uh, you don't want to have one side tightened beyond the other. So. As you can see now, we we went through, we got all the screws in a few threads, and now the guy outside no longer has to hold it down. Now, we went ahead and we upped the uh, power on our gun here to six, and now we're going to go through and uh, tighten them up a little bit more. Again, we're going nice and slow, nothing too fast. See if I can show you the gap. So as, I'm not sure if you can see, but there is a little bit of a gap still. But as we keep going around, don't worry about that. It's going to pull in and, and uh, a little bit at a time, and everything is going to be nice and flat and flush. As you see, he's adjusting the clamp ring here at the bottom. We want to have that uh, seam there seamless, uh, nice and tight and even. Does it have to be like that? Absolutely not. It's just aesthetically, it looks a lot cleaner and nicer when everything butts up perfectly and is all straight and even. He's 
is uh, pulling on the trim ring to pull the seam over. That, that way you got everything tight and even. The holes on the trim ring are oval, so there's a little bit of play in there. So that's the uh, cause for some of the extra adjustment. And again, is that necessary? No. It just looks really nice and clean and gives you that professional finish when everything is even and straight. And again, as you can see, we're going around real slow, a little bit at a time. Might seem kind of tedious, but uh, this is the way to do it to where the trim ring stays nice and flat, even, no, uh, no wrinkles or waves to the ring. go back down here as you can see we're kind of alternating left and right top bottom and that's just so we uh, make sure that everything's even all the way around we don't want to tighten one side more than another make making it more difficult to uh, tighten the opposite side You see that uh, trim ring closing up there, hopefully. I know it's a little bit tough when it's black on black. As you can see, uh, the heads of the screws seem like they're popping out further as he goes along. Uh, that's the trim ring going in, so the screws seem a little bit further out. So we went from the top left, now we're down in the bottom right corner. There's no particular method to it, random is fine. See if we can uh, lighten that up so you can get an idea of that trim ring getting pulled in there. So you guys get the idea here. He's going to do another pass or two. Um, this is a point where you want to just take your time, use patience. And, uh, and again, it, it's just so that cosmetically that trim ring looks nice and straight and even. So on the vertical screws, sometimes because of the curvature of the van and the uh, not exactly the same curvature on the ring, you're going to have a better shot of kind of uh, twisting that ring. So what we uh, often do on those ones is go ahead and finish it off by hand and then that way you can just go a little bit at a time and keep yourself from bending that trim ring and making it look awful. Again, is all this stuff necessary? Not exactly, but taking these extra precautions and, and the extra time to put these screws in, make sure that you have a nice, tight, even seal and uh, very little of any damage to the frame. So there he is on that side. Going to finish those off with a hand screw driver. And pretty much we'll be set here in just a few moments. All right, so now that our install is all done, let's go ahead and play with it a little bit.
as you can see that front one opening and closing up there we go with the out with the rear one so on the uh, sprinter on the driver's side forward position both bottom uh, sections open up the sliding door only one opens but this one we got both of them that open up so you get a really good amount of ventilation coming through from uh, both of these vents here as you can see now let's go ahead and we're gonna go take a look on the All right so here's a look from the outside as you can see that front panel tilting out tilts out a really good ways there's the rear one and as you can see underneath it it's nice and dry so it's uh, keeping that water from getting up inside of there There we go, we're gonna have both of them come out. There you go, they're fairly even. Keep in mind that uh, they won't necessarily be exact. That's just, uh, there's differentiations in the manufacturing of the gearboxes and everything else. So you might have one that comes out just a touch more than the other, that's normal. Uh, nothing to worry about, they both still come out plenty uh, far enough to give you some great ventilation into the rear of your Sprinter van. So that's our uh, install. Again, you can find these windows on uh, vanwindowsdirect.com, your best place online to purchase van windows.